Hello everybody, in this video we're going to take a look at how to configure the Cisco FTD and Cisco Firepower Management Center for external authentication. We're going to do this using Cisco Identity Services Engine and back end we will be using Active Directory. So first of all what we want to do is we want to head over to the GUA of our FMC, log into the FMC and navigate to System users and then external external authentication then what we need to do is we need to click add external authentication object and then we need to select our authentication method so we can either use LDAP or radius for this demonstration we're going to use radius so we'll give this a name of ice external and then our IP address of our ice node will be 192.168.100.2 we'll leave the port as 1812 and we also have the option to configure a backup server in this particular demonstration we will not be doing that for the radius secret, we'll give it a key. Okay, and then we need to assign our classes next to the correct uh, user groups that we want to use. So, for instance, in this demonstration, we'll use administrator, and we can give our class. So these are attribute uh, AV pairs, so attribute value pairs. So in this uh, demonstration, we can um, give our class any name we want as long as it matches up with ICE, and we'll take a look at that in a moment. So we'll call our class admins, and we'll leave the rest as is. And also for if you want to have a default role for users that don't match any of the groups, you can specify one here. I won't be doing that. For shell access to the devices via CLI, we do need to add in um, the users that will be accessing the uh, CLI. So in my case, we'll just go ahead and type in FMC admin and we'll come back to that after. The last step, we can actually test our authentication to um, the server. So let's just do that. If I just type in a username and password and then I press test, we should get a result back. So that particular instance failed. So test failed here. So we can actually see why it failed. And we can just see there that we've got an authentication failure. So if we head over to our ICE appliance, we can see here that this um, user has particularly failed because of the authorization profile. So we'll take a look at that after, which is fine. Um, if I now type in FMC admin and we'll test that. We can see now that the test has been successful. So if you've already got your ICE policies configured, do just make sure that you check the radius login if you do get a failure because it doesn't necessarily mean that you haven't been able to access um, the server or authenticate to the server. So we can see their details with the uh, success. So once that's done, we'll just go ahead now and press save. And now we can see that we've got ice-external here. So what we need to do is by default, it doesn't enable it. So we need to now enable that. So we'll go ahead and enable that. And as I mentioned in regards to shell access um, or shell authentication via the CLI, we also want to enable that. So we'll enable that as well. 
And then once we've done that, we'll just press save and apply. And then again, apply changes. And what this does is this actually enables external authentication for the FMC. It does not enable external authentication for FTD appliances. We need to do that separately. So to, to, to enable the external authentication for the FTD appliances, we'll do that before we head over to the ICE node. So we go to Devices, Platform Settings, and in this demonstration we'll just select this device here. And then we need to head over to external authentication. And now we can see in here we have uh, an external authentication server, the one that we have just configured. And we have the ability to enable it. So what we'll do is we'll enable that simply just by doing that. And then we'll just go ahead and press save. And that's done. So you can see it's enabled now. What we'll do is we'll deploy that those changes and then we'll head over to ICE and take a look at what's going on there. Okay. Okay, so if we look our, at our ICE machine, we just need to make sure that the FMC and the FTD devices are added under our network devices and they have the correct uh, radius keys. So in my example, I've got the um, two devices, so the FMC and the FTD both added, and the radius server um, configurations are configured. So we can we'll take a quick look at the FMC. And we can see in my lab environment, we have the FMC name, the IP address, and we specified a few other um, configurations and then we've applied the shared secret key which is the same as the one that we've just configured on the actual FMC itself. So once the devices are added we then need to head over to policy, policy elements and then results. And then we need to click on authorization profiles. And in this demonstration, I already have one created, so we can use that. So we've got firepower iPhone admin. And this is where we create the AV pair. So you give it a name. So in my example, we've given this a name of firepower admin. The access type will be access accept. And then what we do is we go down to yeah, it still does that. So you can either enter it into ASA VPN, um, the, the actual name which needs to match on the Firepower device under the class that we specified. So if we just go back, just to remind you where we actually specified that, because it does need to be the same. So we just edit our server on the FMC. And under the different groups, we have the class equals admin, so, uh, admins in fact. So this needs to be the same on our authorization profile. So you can see that we've got admins. So you can either write it in there or what I like to do just to be specific is to click on advanced attribute settings, go down to radius and select radius and then class 25. And then in class 25, you can see there now it's added an extra class here and then you could write your name in there. So it's already done it. As you can see, I've got access accept and then we've got the class equals admins so that's the exact same as the FMC so essentially what happens is when ICE returns that attribute to the FMC and it matches it up here then the user that is within the 
uh, Active Directory relevant group and assign that authorization profile will be given administrator privileges or will be placed in the administrator group. So once we've created our authorization profile, we can then go to policy sets, so policy and policy sets. And I have one here called radius management. And we can see that my policy set starts with, and this is purely because I have other things going on in my lab environment. Um, so yours may be different. My policy set starts with um, not equal to uh, any VPN uh, device. Yours could be, if you're creating a policy set for this, your policy set could start with the actual um, device itself. So you could specify the device group or the network device group. So that's created and then we've got our authentication which is default and this is actually referring to um, where it's going to look at uh, pulling those uh, credentials. So this is going to point to uh, my Active Directory server and then under authorization we have one rule which I've created called FMC admin and we can see that we have a group that's already created here and this is matching device, the device administrator group on my Active Directory domain. And anybody that matches that will be given the authorization profile that we've just created, so firepower-admin. So that's all good from that perspective. So we'll just go across to the live logs. We'll change the filter to the last five minutes. So we have nothing there. We'll just quickly just make sure that the policy has been deployed on the FMC which it has and now what we'll do is we will log out of this FMC and then we'll log back in with the Active Directory user in my case it's going to be FMC admin and we can see there that that is successful so we're just logging in now So there we go, that connection's been successful. So if we refer to the live logs in ICE, we can see there that the uh, connection has been successful for FMC admin. And if we have a quick look in more detail, we can see there that we um, found the user FMC admin, um, which authenticated against Active Directory. We found the, the forest so it's actually pulled the FMC admin from the authenticate successfully. So that's for the graphical user interface. So if now we want to do the same uh, because we enable shell access for the FTD and FMC appliances, we can also do that. So if we just open a SSH client, And then what we need to do is we will start a new session. And it'll be SSH. And our host is going to be fmcv002.ccie security lab.co.uk or IP address, whichever works for you if you're following along. Go ahead and press OK with that. We can see now that we've got the login prompt. So if I now enter FMC admin, enter the password, we can see there now that we've got access and we've logged in successfully to this box. So again, if we go across to the live logs, we can see here that we have matched the policy that we created and we have authenticated successfully via the CLI. And last but not least, we'll also do the same with the FTD appliance. So if we just do new session, SSH, and we'll just log in as well. And again, we'll use FMC admin. And we can see there as well that we have logged in successfully to the Firepower Threat Defense device. And that's the Firepower Management Center. 
So again, if we just refresh the live logs quickly, we can also see there that we managed to log in to the FTD appliance as well. So we've got the FTD and then we've got the FT, uh, FMC as well. So that video is simply how you can configure external authentication using Radius, Cisco ICE and Active Directory on the Firepower Management Center and Firepower Threat Defense. If you've got any questions, feel free to comment in the comment section below. Please like, subscribe. Thank you for watching.